so once we do that we have to like um, we have to like do some sort of uh, intro that was actually what I did here from the video the first thing that actually came was the intro you see the dark background or the dark film and then it opens up it's just basically opens up so how we can actually do that is that we need to like introduce a an, an adjustment layer basically I'll go back to my videos yeah and click here and then come to my adjustment layer and say okay yeah so my adjustment layer clearly appears here I hold and drag into my timeline maybe expand it to the end as a matter of fact I'm just gonna make the ending here so we avoid that other repetition so just put this one out here so I have that mark out there okay cool so I have my adjustment layer I'll go to my effects to add not effects controls I'll go to my effects okay so we have our effects here I'm going to drag my effects also down to this area so I have everything here so what don't I need here what don't I need here let me see what I don't need I think I basically need everything here okay all right, I'm just going to move this here. I'll close this panel. Yeah, I just need I need some space here. That's why I'm doing that. Okay, cool. All right. So um, let's work with this. Cool. So I'll go to my effects and then I look for crop. All right, that's my crop over there. I'll drag my crop down into my adjustment layer. So just in case you don't understand what the adjustment layer does, it's more or less like um, an invisible placeholder. It takes up whatever effect you place on it, but it doesn't quite affect the, uh, what's it called? It doesn't quite affect the play, the video, if no effect is actually applied to it. So I want to apply an effect that we, um, affect the entire clip the entire clips that i have here all this clip all at once i think the best way for me to do that is to apply it to an adjustment layer so an adjustment layer actually affects everything that's beneath that's beneath it all the clips images that are beneath it and all of that so it's like well, it doesn't really affect them if there is no effect on them right just as it is right now other than an adjustment layer but it doesn't really show make any difference here but because i have an uh, effect which is crop over here it does like you know affect the entire clip bottom down so I just collapse this and you know go to the effects which is the crop effect that i added to my adjustment layer here and i'll create a keyframe right at the beginning of my clip so, so be at the beginning of my clip i'll click on the top and the bottom so what the crop tool does is that it crops clearly and stuff so if i were to like drag this down you see what it's doing it's cropping it down and stuff like you know leaving the color of the adjustment layer to be black and all of that that's what it does so it just crops and stuff cuts more or less so i come here and then i clip like you know i want this stuff cropped to like 50 percent of the screen so it comes down to like 50 percent of the screen from the top and also 50 percent from the bottom so i have a keyframe from for that so let me just expand this a bit go yeah and then go somewhere in between somewhere in the middle right here should work cool right here i'm talking about right here okay, cool and um i'll reset this i'll reset it back to maybe 100 by just clicking here sorry back to zero by clicking there and then click it and then everything comes back to normal so i have my keyframes back the way it works so if i play it goes on like this like you know opens up and stuff so let me just go back to the keyframe and uh, expand this a bit i'll highlight all of these right click and then these there and the reason i'm doing this is because i want the uh i, I want a smooth movement i don't want it to be linear i don't, I don't want this to be linear to just come in straight up like that so there's a particular way i want it to move and stuff so uh if i click down this drop down you see a particular curve that explains the movements and this curve here is more or less like 
a, a linear movement and stuff although i have my easy in here but from this graph of I, over here i can actually control the movement of my of this uh, animation the keyframe that i had that i had applied so i'll come here and i'll drag this a bit forward so what i'll what i'll be having is this kind of transition is where it moves like it's more slow and fast so that's that's what i'm actually looking for so it's slow and fast that's that's what i'm saying so so it's slow and fast at the edge so that's actually how i want it so i apply this for the first keyframes so i'll come over here also for the bottom keyframe come down to my drop down here come over here and just move it down a bit like this just like i did the it's actually advisable that it's done at the same time so i just uh, find a way to get it done at the same time no, i don't think that's okay my screen does not will not allow me because of its size and stuff so i'm just doing it in the so once i've done that all i just need to do is to hold and drag this down to the end here that should work for me okay that should work all right so all i just did was to like create keyframes and then maybe use a little bit of uh, my graph editor to get like more or less like an easy in effects on the transition there so i'll just click all right good so i have a slow movement as it opens up that's what i have here slow movement as it opens up so. okay cool so um let me see all right so i'll do a little bit of an animation on this uh on the first clip so it goes with the with the uh, the max or the crop that we have here so let's just go to and click here I'll come to the beginning of the frame click on scale and then make this like 300 okay and then come this somewhere around here somewhere around here and then make it just reset it back and stuff. So, so it zooms out So that's what I want. So I'll come here. Let me just move this forward a bit so I can easily create our keyframe. Um, sorry, I meant create our base here and stuff. So just come down here, graph editor, move this a bit forward. That's just one minute. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and play. All right, cool. So just drag this to the end. Sorry, both of them are selected. I just need this to drag to the end. Alright, so if I play, we have that effect of how it opens up now with that. Okay, cool. Alright, so that's what I want there. And uh, before I'm going forward, let me just quickly expand my track here so we'll see this stuff much better. Mm. This is my audio bits. So have more room. Okay. All right. Click and I'll nest this here. So okay, nest this and uh, also nest this. I'll call this video. or maybe video two and nest this. Minimize our track. All right. So right click and nest this. I'll call this video three according to their placement i'm just nesting them so video of it four of it three i believe you have it three yeah now i should be three okay and nest this call this v4 
expand them a bit so you can see the title so clearly okay i think we'll work we'll with that okay cool so i play this all right so let's just go ahead now and add same similar effects to this others but now the effect i'm going to be adding here is due to the bits that we have right in between here so not while uh i can move my expand my um my track here by holding down alt apparently alt seems to be a very uh, useful feature or like useful key when doing stuffs and doing stuffs in premiere pro so i just hold i don't know i've just been using it a lot so so hold the alt down and just scroll your wheel that's your mouse wheel and just scroll up and down it expands it okay cool so this is what i was actually trying to get here this part here like you know there's a bit here there's a bit right here that's actually not touched right like you know we don't have a marker on it that's what i mean so right here we do not have a marker on it that's what i'm trying to um get an effect on through our video so what i'm going to do is this i'm going to come down here at the beginning of our clip that's clip right here this clip here and i'll create a keyframe and maybe make it around 150 instead so, okay <clears throat> so it zooms out and then somewhere in between mind you my track or my playhead moves similarly as it moves here like you know it's a uh, same thing or simultaneous i don't know the right word to use for it but as you can see it moves uh, that way so just uh, so i want to do this bit here and then i'll just click here to reset it back to 100 as it was so it comes in like that on that bit so it's blazing like this okay cool so there's a movement at this side of the bit so i high light both select both keyframes right click and base there and do what we've always been doing i don't know by now you should be used to it so i just hold that here and then create like a uh sorry i don't know that um sorry sorry thanks right click base there and drag slow so slow and fast as I want. So, 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 so. All right, cool. All right. So we'll come to this third one. Also, I want to do the same thing. Basically, the same thing here. H move. Um, okay, B to get our move tool back. So H is the hand tool to move across the screen. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So I'll come back here to this bit here. I think it's more like a uh, snap also yeah so like you know a snap and all of that so we need like a move moment of the video there so i'm going to do the same thing i did there so click here make this uh, come over here at the beginning of the clip yeah and then make it a 150 click there select all the keyframes right click go to your bezier and down to our graph editor as we have it and hold on here and just drag it so we have a slow fast movement slow fast that's what this corpse means slow fast so just drag it a bit more so it's really faster cool. so slow and faster all right cool all right so i'm sure you guys are tired of like me having to repeat a particular process and all that so for the rest of the video we do not have to necessarily um create the same keyframe as we did here and you know go through the same process of creating keyframes and then adding bezier and then adjusting it as it suits us but I, I think we we could just copy that effect the effect we had and then he yeah, had titled this one video three two but anyways i think it still works for us uh so we could right click and copy we copy the effect there and come down here to this video here and right click and go to paste attributes and we are like you know pasting the attributes of motion opacity whatever attribute is ascribed to the initial video it would be uh, affected in the new video so i just have to click on my ok and then you find out that it now has the same effects and stuff so i can do the same thing with the other videos too if i wish to 
permissions. This one, no keyframe. I right click and I go to my paste attributes and I say OK. And there you go, you have the keyframe. So we could do it for the others as you know. I'm just going to do this for this one last one. So you see how it's done. So right click, first of all, I'm going to nest this. Uh, by the way, I'm not so sure if you guys know what nesting does. Nesting, I believe I've explained this in my initial video. Like it doesn't just change colors. I know you must have noticed how like you, know, you change from the normal blue to green. That's not what it does. It doesn't it's not changing of colors. It's actually embedding uh, clips within uh within a clip that's what it does like it's more or less like a sub sequence so so if i do clip i'll click twice on this here it takes me to the original clip here where i can actually add a different effect or make some extra adjustment there and it will be affected um, on the sequence but we don't really need that yet so let's just work with what we have here so i'll just go here and then paste attributes and say okay cool. so we have the keyframes so let's go ahead and play what we have here not perfect yet not there yet but again, let's see what it can do so all right so okay cool all right so that's what we have and um nothing so special there yes well i think it's kind of like uh gives us um what's it called like a feel of what we're trying to do it's kind of like gives us a feel of what we're trying to do so the next thing i'm going to do is here let me just bring down my audio a bit down because we're not going to be making so much use of the audio so let me just bring down a bit and this one drag this down a bit so you can see the um the other layers properly and so so now i'm going to do something and i need you guys to follow now by the way i have the work file for this video available so you can you can download it and you, know, you can get the, the work files if you so want it it's, so including the effect i'm about to apply so if you come down to my effects here and I click and type slice. All right, so this is the effect that I'm going to be using. And uh, I'm sure is a preset that you guys, some of you guys don't have. So, but I have it installed here. So um, I'm going to show you how to install it on your system. So just pay attention. So this is my preset here. Right click and go to import. When you go to imports, you see it in your work file. You see this folder preset. Just double click on it, and you know that's it. Slice there and just open it. It automatically comes into play here. So from there, you can uh, just type in the word slice, and there you see it. I think I have it double. I have it twice now. Oh, yeah, but I'm I'm deaf. I'm clearly going to like take it out. Okay, cool. So I'm going to add that at the end here, as up from the second videos, from the second video. So we have slice right and slice left. So I'm just going to alternate it as it goes. So slice right comes to the first video, and slice left go to the one after, and you know just so on and so forth. If and that's one last one not coming out here so once again we are noticing something new here which is this red line that is shown here uh, this actually means slow rendering like now rendering is actually against really affected we have it's yellow here if i play it it's fair enough over here you see it's dragging now it's dragging because it's red it means that okay well you can't really play conveniently anymore so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pre-render this area just to make it faster so and that's not going to be happening so i just come here put my in so i get my just the right part the right side i want to render so my in and my out oh it's the out i already have that there i'm just doing this for the sake of you guys so i come
come down to my sequence and then I render into out. And um, we'll wait for a while because I need the, the render to actually be smooth so we can see uh, the effect much better. So it's going to take a couple of uh, I don't know, minutes to render. So let's just uh, hold on for that bit. Uh, let's hold on for that bit. Okay, so we have uh, that bit covered. So as you can see from here, after rendering, it becomes very green, just green. So that means that part is actually like very close very well. So you can see the effect that was applied there, the slice effect, slice left and right. That's cool. All right, so I'll just come here. I drag, I'll drag my in marker. I'm like, you know, drag it to the edge and all that. Besides, we can actually render everything if we want to. So everything just plays like really fast and stuff. That makes the work much easier. Especially if you're not using a very fast system like me. So now we have it all red. So, oh, sorry, all green. Sorry about that. So, okay, 